Hey everybody, I'm currently treating my quarantine tank for ick. Uh, the fish I brought home unfortunately were so infected that they died, but I did bring some more fish home to replace them, and since they've been in a tank that has now been exposed to the ick parasite, I have to treat uh, the full tank for a full cycle. And I thought now would be a good time to talk about it, because while I was at the pet store, the uh, sales associate that I was talking to said once again this often repeated myth about the ick parasite and so I want to talk all about ick today and its whole life cycle, how to treat it, uh, different treatment options, etc. But I want to start by dispelling a very common myth and misunderstanding about ick and that is the idea that it can live in your fish tank for extended periods of time or go dormant uh, somehow and stay in your fish tank until the conditions are right or your fish's immune system has been suppressed uh, or something and then you get this sort of flare up and you have an outbreak of ick again or something. It does not work that way at all. Uh, ick is a parasite, I believe it's a protozoan parasite, but you could call it a bug for all I care. I'm not really worried about all the different names. Um, the three, there's three stages to the life cycle. Uh, one's called a tomont, one's called a trophon. I don't even remember what the third one's called, but again, that kind of stuff is academic. We don't need to know the names of them, but I am going to discuss that whole process so we've got an understanding uh, of how the life cycle of this organism works, and that'll give us a better understanding of how to eradicate it uh, from our tanks and to protect our other uh, fish if we understand what's going on with it. So first of all, let's just go over the life cycle real quickly. We'll start with the little white spots you see on the fish. That is the results of irritation because underneath of the skin there is a little organism and it's burrowing into the fish's skin and feeding on its flesh. And that little white bump you see is basically a result of the infection under the skin there. So once the organism has eaten its fill, it sort of pops out and it floats to the surface or the bottom of the tank down into the substrate and it encapsulates itself in a really really tough cyst and in that cyst it begins dividing and dividing and dividing and it divides until the point where the cyst literally ruptures from the internal pressure of the cell division and hundreds or even thousands of little swimmers emerge and go up into the water column as free swimmers looking for a new host. It's during this stage that it's actually susceptible to treatment more often than not. There is one way to treat it in any stage of its life cycle, uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, most medications and treatments will impact it during this free swimming stage. Um, once it finds a host, it burrows back into the skin and starts the whole process over. So while it's burrowed into the fish and while it's encapsulated in the cyst on the bottom, it's almost immune to anything. Medication doesn't affect it. All the treatments you're giving it don't do anything. It's only once it erupts and comes out into the water column as a free swimmer that it becomes susceptible to these various uh, antiparasitic medications and so on and so forth. I myself use Ikatac. I've used it for years. It's a great product. It's all natural. You don't really have to do much with changing your filters and all that stuff. You do have to take the carbon filter out, of course. Uh, carbon filters, you have to take out when you use any kind of medication. That carbon filter, uh, that's what a carbon filter is for. It's not for keeping your water clean. It's for removing chemicals from your water, uh, like medication. So if you're going to medicate with anything, you got to remove your carbon filter. But the ick attack is just a cap full for every 10 gallons. You do that for 10 days and you're done. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. Uh, you can check that out. Most of those medications work basically the same way and they do the same thing. There's a reason you've got to do it for 10 days and there's a reason they always recommend uh, cranking your tank up to about 80 to 82 degrees and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, the other way you can treat for ick is a heat treatment. And I've done videos about this a long time ago, back when I was much more, you know, I was doing a lot of experiments and trying different things. And I can't really think of a circumstance where a heat treatment would be necessary, except if you had no access to any kind of medication, depending on where you are, what your circumstances are. If you had to treat with heat, you can do it. Uh, if you raise your tank temperature to about 84.5 degrees, I want to say, just say 85 degrees, um, that is actually hot enough that it will prevent the 
free swimming cycle once again, it will prevent that cycle from getting to a new host. I don't know why, but the water temperature is that hot and the little swimmers will not burrow into a new host. So you've got to let the whole process run until all of the organisms have gone through to that cycle. And then if they don't find a new host or if they can't attach to a new host within three or four days, they simply die off. And then your infection's over, your outbreak is over, and you've killed them all off. But you've got to run that whole cycle. That's why they always say do it for 10 to 14 days, even if you don't see the white spots anymore. You've got if there's stuff on the bottom that hasn't you know broken loose and, and hasn't come into that free swimming, you got to let that whole cycle go through. Once it gets to that free swimming process, it's susceptible. Even with the mild heat treatment of 85 degrees, if you really want to just kill it outright, you can take your tank temperature up to I want to say 90 degrees. And again. I've lost fish doing this. It wipes your plants out if you leave the temperature up that high for too long. I don't recommend putting your tank temperature up that high. If you're going to heat treat, I recommend the lower temperature for the longer duration. You've got to do it for about 8 to 10 days. Um, but if you go up to 90 degrees, it will just wipe the, the organism out no matter where it is. If it's in your fish's body, if it's on the, in the cysts, and once that temperature reaches 90 degrees, it dies. There is one strain that is heat resistant though, so that's not a guarantee even cranking your tank up that high will kill it. So again, I don't recommend doing the heat treatment. I recommend simply using some simple product that again are very inexpensive and easy to access. Um, they'll take care of it no problem. So temperature affects how fast this process happens and that's why they usually recommend turning your tank temperature up between 80 and 82 degrees. That speeds the whole cycle up and it all happens within about 10 days, which is why they say do 10 to 14 days, make sure you've got it. If your tank temperature is lower, if you're running your tank at 75 degrees and you only do a 10 day cycle, you likely didn't kill it off. It still, it slows it way down once you get below 80 degrees. And if you've got a cold water tank for some reason, there are people out there that keep trout uh, and things like that, specialty tanks, scientific tanks. Um, if you've got the temperature down in the 60s, it can take months for this entire cycle to go through. And therefore, I could see that giving rise to the idea that, you know, it was last summer, but, you know, we haven't introduced any new fish, and then boom, we've got ick again. If you've got a really cold tank, it could happen in that scenario. If you're running your tank at 85 or, or 75 to 80 degrees, like most of us do, the whole process is going to go through fairly quickly. If you're down at the lower end, it might take three weeks to go through. Um, if you're up at 82, 83 degrees, it's going to take 10 days and it's going to be done. So you raise your tank temperature, you give it your treatment, you go for the full 10 days, and then you do your post-treatment water changes and so on and so forth. So salt is often uh, included in how you should treat your animals. I think I might shoot a video about this specifically because salt is often uh, suggested in, in the use of uh, lots of different types of illnesses your fish might acquire. And the reason salt is suggested is not because it actually prevents the ick organism. If, if you were to put it, you'd have to have a brackish tank basically. You'd have to raise the salt levels that high before you're going to um, prevent the, the organism itself. What that's really there for is the same reason your doctor tells you to get lots of rest when you have a cold. A uh, fish's body is working overtime when it's infected with parasites. Uh, freshwater fish also has to work to extract sodium out of the water. It does need sodium, and so if you've got a tank that doesn't have a lot in it, your fish has really got to work to pull that out, and that's burning calories. It's using energy that that fish could be using to heal itself and protect itself, uh, etc. So by putting some aquarium salt in, you're actually just jacking up the sodium levels in the tank and making it so much easier for that fish to extract the sodium through its gills. And it just relieves the stress on the fish a little bit. That's why pretty much they always say, um, you know, if your fish is stressed or if you've got Papa, any kind of disease whatsoever, they suggest putting some aquarium salts in the tank. And that's usually just to help relieve the stress on the animal as opposed to directly treating uh, whatever the issue is, and that's certainly the case with uh, ick. If you've got, you know, ick in a tank, and someone recommends salting it, it's not the, the salt's not going to do much as far as treating the ick itself, but it is going to help relieve your fish's uh, stress a little bit. So again, my recommendation would be to simply get one of these products, use it. 
follow the instructions and you just shouldn't have any problems with it. I'm also going to recommend using an air stone during this process. Anytime you've got sick fish, again, the air stone is just going to relieve the stress on the fish. The air stone is also going to prevent in case any kind of oxidation is going on with whatever medication or treatment you're using. So it also, uh, once you get that temperature up to about 82 degrees, you start getting on that edge of where it's hard to, you know, the, the water doesn't hold much oxygen at that temperature. So an air stone is always a good idea to add into this mix when you're treating your fish for any sort of illness, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, or anything like that. So I hope that cleared it up. My main concern is just clearing up this, this myth that you've got ick just living in your fish tank. If you haven't introduced ick into your fish tank, your fish will never ever get ick ever. They're only going to get it if you introduce it to them. But if you're a fish keeper and you're buying fish from different stores, whether it's a good store, bad store, whatever, you're going to get ick at some point in your, you know, fish keeping hobby. It's just, it's inevitable. You're going to, you know, run across ick at some point. And so having a little bit of treatment stuff on hand uh, is always a good idea. If you catch it in time, if you know what the signs are, you see the white spots, you see the flashing behavior where, you know, the fish go off the bottom, they go off the rocks and all that. That's the same as you or me scratching because you got parasites in your skin. That's, that's the fish literally trying to rub whatever is on them off. Um, so if you see your fish doing that excessively, and then of course if you see those little white specks all over your fish, it might look like they've got little tiny micro air bubbles all over it. It might look like they've been sprinkled with salt uh, or something like that. If you see that, if you see it like there, there are white spots all over it and it looks like it's sprinkled with salt, that's a pretty advanced amount of ick. The gills at that point are probably really suffering if you've got a fish that's got that much uh, ick on it. It looks like it's been dusted with salt. Um, you need to begin treatment immediately. But if you catch it in time, it's nothing more than a nuisance. Uh, just, again, run the treatment for a few days and you're done. The downside to ick is that if you ignore it or you wait too long, it is 100% fatal 100% of the time. It will kill every fish in your tank, period, if you don't treat it. It will kill every fish in your tank, period, if you don't treat ick. You have to treat it. And again, the sooner the better becomes just more than just a nuisance. Now, if you're wondering why ick is not such a terrible disaster out in the wild, it's because think of the difference between this and a river or a lake. Um, when those cysts erupt at the bottom of a stream and go up into the water column of a flowing stream, th there's a lot of real estate to cover looking for a fish. A few of those may find a fish to inhabit. But that's all that needs to happen. A tree will drop thousands of seeds, and as long as a few of them root in and start growing, the tree's done its job. So if a few fish get a few little, you know, parasites in them, those parasites will then produce thousands more free swimmers that will then go find a few fish, and a few parasites will get into them, um, etc. It's nothing more than a nuisance and an irritant, and most fish never have more than a little bit of ick at any one given time. In here, that ick's got nowhere to go, those fish have nowhere to go, it's, it's just right there. And those fish, it just goes around and around and around and they keep getting reinfected and more infected and more swimmers and it, it snowballs really fast, especially in a nice warm tank. Lots of substrate for that stuff to get down into and reproduce and you, you wind up having real, real issues with ick. It can become fatal really quickly. And uh, on the last note, I will say now I'm thinking about it, always pay attention to your bottom dwelling fish or even fish that swim around in the lower strata of the water. Think about the life cycle and those swimmers are erupting in the, in the substrate and swimming up looking for prey, you know, looking for a host animal. If you've got a pleco that sits on the substrate and those things erupt, where do you, what's the first host animal do you think they're going to get on? So plecos, any fish that lays on the bottom will will get covered in ick before other fish are even starting to really get noticeable effects of it. So really pay attention to your uh, the lower strata animals in your tank if you're concerned about ick, <clears throat> excuse me, or if you think there's you know any concern in your tank uh, has been contaminated with it. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. That way you won't miss anything else I got coming up. I uh, hope to see you real soon. Don't forget this one here is my 125 gallon native tank and that one back there is my 40 breeder. So thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.